welcome back to Derby Coy. It's uh, the weekend now. Um, actually, the sun's actually could just come out at the moment. But we have had some rain this morning. <laughs> what weather we've had, eh? Absolutely unbelievable. Just over a week ago, was in weathers around you know, 28, 29, even for 32 at one point. Um, and we're at the moment, we're at 19 and a half. Unbelievable. And that's quite warm be honest to what it's been um, in that time the pond the hottest temperature in the pond um, I think I got up to 28 and a half just over a week ago so let's have a quick look in here if you can see that we're down to 18 so in just in a week that's a, a drop of 10 degrees <sighs> unbelievable um, so I'll spin around and have a quick look at the uh, fish in the pond. There you go. They are a little hungry at the moment. Still. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Lilies are all looking good still. Got a couple more I want to pull off here that are encroaching over a bit. Um, but that sudden drop in temperature again, uh, what's all I can put it down to is my Kajaku. Remember we saw another Kajaku that was losing its colour? You can see him down there under the Sankey. And here's how you can't really see him now. Just over there is virtually white now with a couple of small orange patches. He's put a bit of size on, I must admit. Um, again, that was the one I wasn't happy about with one of the batch of fish I had first. The first lot I had from that uh, certain shop that I won't be going back to for fish. Um, all I can put it down to, obviously it's something to do with bad genetics. I was uh, supposedly sold a high grade koi and I don't think he was, as I said, but that sudden drop in temperature, it, even though you know it's 28, it slowly starts to creep and then we had some really cold weather when it dropped down to about eight and nine on the night. And I just noticed one morning I come up overnight and he just completely lost its color tiny little bit of orange if we can see him just see him down there he's in the, the sun there you can't really see him hopefully we'll catch a little piece even there he is over there he's just come he or she has really lost its color all the other fish the colors looking great on them obviously Magoshki is uh, lost his color for some reason again again that was a temperature thing it was that sudden drop in temperature again I don't know what it is if it is that they're all on a it's not nothing to do with the food you know i think they're on a decent quality food and all the other fish are, are blooming on it now putting on size putting on color they're all looking great but them that one uh, i just honestly don't know but i don't like I say it's gone i don't think it's going to come back um but we'll see how we you may turn this for something else and something nice we'll have to wait and see yeah so uh a little disappointed in that um but as i said it's obviously down some down to genetics something like that and i'm sure this sort of drop in temperature uh has got something to do with it as well um but yeah actually i think that's actually that pond's wrong not the right temperature but i know it now is a lot colder i've left i've done a clean yesterday i left the thermometer out again <laughs> i've left my uh thing out so put that in there for a minute and we'll get a proper temperature of the pond but I didn't know I didn't know it has dropped so we'll see what that goes to in a second um, when I actually noticed it which was I think Friday when I come home from work uh, again Friday a torrential rain Friday really some heavy heavy rain Friday so I thought well I'll get home after the, the weather we've had we have had some hot weather recently I've been bunging the food in uh, the high protein food so um, when I come home on Friday after all that rain I thought, right, I'll do it on the evening, I'll do a, a water test. And uh, that's when I actually noticed it. I thought, right, I'm definitely going to do a water test just to see if there is a problem in the water. Um, I've got up my the results here so I don't forget. Um, ammonia, virtually zero, 0 0.1. Uh, I estimated that. Um, nitrite, again, that was about 0 0.1. So nothing really to worry about. Nitrate was at five. Um, again, very ne negligible. Um, pH was spot on. 
at eight. Uh, I have got, we are in very hard water here and the pH has always been around eight. Uh, and the cage again is spot on with six drops to be changed color. Um, so there was nothing really drastic there to worry about. Um, I'm assuming obviously with all these, the, you know, the, the nitrite and nitrites going up and a tiny bit of ammonia, because they have been really uh, banging the food in a little bit because they have been wanting the food with the temperature we've been having. Um, so I'm assuming just the filters obviously couldn't keep up with that. Also, if you have a look at my um, watercress, as you can see, these was flourishing, um, but they've actually absolutely decimated them, uh, swimming through them, breaking them off, chewing them up. So there's not as much watercress in there as there was to help reduce those nitrates and nitrites and stuff out of the water. Um, so I'm assuming that have something to do with it as well. But it's definitely, definitely to do with the food. Let me spin you back around. Um, 100%. Oh, sorry. There you go. Um, yeah. So uh, it's definitely something to do with the food. The amount that I'm putting in there. As I said, it's not a cheap food I'm using. I'm using a mix of the Queenie Kai food, which is a, you know a good, a reasonable, reasonably good food, and the NT Labs uh, growth I'm using. And again, a good food. Um, also, we obviously be a mix of the uh, Japan mix from NT, uh, from NT and Kuinikoi, and I've been feeding obviously my freshwater shrimp a little bit of that occasionally. Um, so yeah, it's not a cheap food, but I have been putting it in a little bit, uh, maybe a bit too much. I just wanted to bulk them up a little bit, and they definitely have put some size on. Uh, so obviously the filters haven't been able to keep up with it. So, but now the temperatures I have really have dropped over the last couple of days. Um, I have reduced the food intake on them. Um, I'm actually no longer feeding the high protein uh, NT lab stuff at the moment. All I'm giving them is the Queenie Koi uh, Ultimate Mix, which is in my tub down the bottom. That's just that on its own. It's still, you know, it's, really, it's a good food. It's uh, not, not a massively high protein. It's around 36, 34, 36% protein. Um, where the Queenie Koi, not the Queenie Koi, the NT labs, I can't remember where that was now. But again, that, that's a lot higher. Uh, it's in the 40s of that, I believe. 40 something, I can't remember off the top of my head. So uh, I'm assuming, obviously these readings are due to the food, um, but um, we'll see how it goes. I've, so the last couple of days now, I have dropped that down. So I will do another test, uh, probably hopefully today, I'll get one done, uh, just to see if we can get them back down a little bit. But even if I didn't, then nothing really to worry about, to be honest. Uh, ammonia 0 0.1, nitrite 0 0.1, nitrite 5, it's negligible. It's nowhere near it in the rounds of, you know, a major problem. Um, I've still, I have up the water to, uh, tra change a little bit just to try and drop that as well. Um, I did a big water change yesterday. I flushed the easy pot out twice, um, and I give my um, filter floss and everything else a good clean. Uh, so it really did drop the water down. So I've topped that back up, and I'm still doing the trickling system. Obviously, my 24 hour trickle. That's a constant uh, trickle in, trickle out. So that's how when we want water changes. Um, so yeah, so that's where we are with that. Um, let's have a quick look back at the pond. You know, the pond is actually 17.7, .7, not at 18. That was my fault. It's obviously 18 um, down the bottom, back there in the shade, down where it was hanging down the bottom. So the, the water, pond water at the moment is 17.7. .7. As I said, it was over 28 about a week ago. Um, so that, that is a major drop in ten in seven days, ten degrees. So it is what it is. And if you believe what the weatherman's saying again, which just completely changes day to day, um, we're expecting the back end of this storm shortly. If we, if that, you know, if that if it weren't yesterday, so we're having um, some more rain over the next week. But they're saying towards the end of the month, it could be again um, back into a mini heat wave. So. We'll wait and see. It'd be nice to get the temperature back up, but it's been a terrible start to the season. Wind and rain and awful temperatures at the beginning of the year. We had a week and a half of after the glorious weather, and then it's gone back down to crappy weather again. So, fingers crossed we can get some more temperatures back up again. And uh, try and get a bit more of a season. Um, obviously, in these weathers, and I'm obviously not covered here, so I can't sit out as much as I'd like to and enjoy them. 
I do sit out when I come home from work. I do, you know, come home, check my filters, do everything else I need to do. A bit of maintenance every day. And I, I do sit by the pond a little bit, give them a bit of food and watching them. But if it's absolutely pickling down the rain, it's not something we can, I can actually do and enjoy. And so, but hopefully we can get these weather, the temperatures back up and uh, start to enjoy it again. But it is what it is at the moment. But who knows? Uh, right, for today, a couple of things I want to get done. I want to um, do my... I'll spin you around down here again. Um, I've got my brackets down there for my upflow filter. So I want to put the board across for that, put the, the uh, top on it. I've got to put a hole in it, position that where I want my easy, my upflow filter in place. Yes, I'm still waiting for parts, so I can't complete it yet. There's just things I can get done ready for the main build. So I want to put my board across on there. Hopefully get the hole in the right position I need to and put it up and move my bracket on there. And what I want to do if I come around here. <coughs> right, what I want to do is have a look. I've got to put my pipe work from here into the filter house and the return pipe because obviously it's going back, uh, being returned to my returns over here, there and over there. So that's going to come back to that way. So what I want to do is, is uh, take this apart, take this open, open this up. Because in here, I've said before, I want to put my um, diverter. So I can, uh, my bypass, even, I should say. So I can run the pipe up, bypass it and put it back when I'm doing treatments or uh, medical and things like that. And when I'm not, it's just going to go straight in. So I'll work out what I need to do here. Obviously, I've got to dig all this up here, down here. Um, I'll put that curb stone in as a retainer so that will be moved uh, down there and all right down here at some point i'm actually thinking once the pipe works down it doesn't get a lot of traffic here um but what we're thinking of doing is actually where the pipe work is digging all out i want to insulate the pipe cover it in hopefully some gravel then i'm thinking of actually putting a slab on the top of it so a row of slabs down here to walk on so if I do need to do any work on the pipe, if there's a problem, I can just lift the slab up, move the uh, gravel, and put that down. But I'm not 100% into doing that yet. Also, what I want to do today, if you remember, I said when I last video, one of my recent videos, I did my um, modification to my filter basket in here, my skimmer basket, and I said I wanted to put some filter floss in. I actually found a piece um, in one of my sheds, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it in there. Yeah, look more. I absolutely love ripping this apart. <laughs> so there's more of that in there. I'll sort that out. But I did actually find a piece of jack matting. It wasn't the best piece, to be honest. It was a little raggedy, so I'll give it a good clean out. But it really has helped catch a lot of the stuff. So what I've done, I've actually bought some. Um, I bought some felt, uh, Japanese matting. And it's not bloody cheap stuff for <laughs> some of the places you go, to be honest. Um, so let me get that and I'll show you that piece. Okay, so jump matted. Um, had a look round at it. That's a bit in my eye. Uh, I said it's not the cheapest stuff out there, some of it. Um, and I, I seen one, I thought, you know, get a piece of jump matting. Last time I bought some, it was a few years ago. Um, so I thought it's not that expensive. And I was looking round and for um, one piece, I think it was just under a metre square, it was like 40 quid. Oh, bloody hell. Um, but obviously I didn't need that much, I only wanted a small piece to go in. Uh, I managed to find somewhere that I think it was like seven, eight quid plus postage a piece that will fit in there. I think it's like 17 by 11 inches or something. I thought, well, that'll do. I'll get one of them or I'll get two of them. Keep one as a spare wash, one clean one. So I'll get a couple of them. So it was like 17, 18 quid or something like that. And then I came across these. Same size, 11 by 17. Um, I think it was on eBay, but it was a pack of three for, I think it was £15 with free postage. So I thought, jobs are good and I'll have that. So I got three pieces there off eBay for the same price or less with the postage than uh, the two pieces. So I thought, what a bargain. Can't pass that one up. So what I'm going to do is, uh, again, I'm going to do, a, I think I'm going to do another slight modification to the basket. Because what I was going to do is where the basket drops, I was going to cut the thing to fit in. But I thought, well, that could restrict the water going through underneath a little bit. So what I'm going to do 
is where the basket actually drops to the, the lower piece. I'm going to put a piece of mesh across the top of that. So the jack matting, excuse me, the jack matting itself will just fit flush like that instead of me having to cut it down here somewhere. So it's actually just going to fit flush on the on top of the basket and it will get all the big stuff and it will still let water through and the flow of water shouldn't be restricted too much, I hope. Fingers crossed. So I'll get that one done, say, and that will give me uh, two spare pieces so I can, when I want to clean it, just take it out, slide a new one in, wash the other one, jobs are good. So let's get the basket out and we'll get on with that one. Okay, so as you can see that all I've done is just this section here, which is a deeper section going down. I've just put a bit of mesh across so it'll fit in. I have had to trim my uh, jack matting down, it wants to be too long. Easy enough to do with the standing knife, so that should now just fit straight on top of the basket. Obviously, when this is in the basket, it's actually when it goes in, the basket sits, you know, about here. So it's, there's a quarter drop into the basket. So we've still got room in there to catch it, and there's room for the water to get past in there. Um, I just wanted to catch any of the bigger stuff, especially the amount of watercress they're breaking off and bits of lily and everything else. So that will catch all that. And there's still room for all the water to get down the sides and through the jack matting and hopefully shouldn't restrict the flow and when i want to change it all i'll do is turn it off take the whole thing out i'll cut another one down to size and then fit it back in as you can see there's still a gap down there for a lot of the stuff to get through um once that's in properly yeah so as you see there's a bit of, still a gap for the water flow to go but any big stuff just hopefully gets trapped on the jack matting so we'll see how that goes and how it works. So I'll get this in and we'll turn it back on. Okay, as you can see, jet matting's in. Running fine. Around here. And as you can see, I'm still getting the flow in, so that's not a problem. So obviously cut the flow down a little bit, that's not gonna hurt it. That's actually gonna help the amount that's coming through my upflow filter. But that's just gonna stop all the big stuff getting stuck in my hot flow filter now that's gonna be a lot better and if you want to see anything does get past the jack matting hopefully it's not any any of the bigger stuff again it'll get caught in the mesh underneath so i'll take the jack matting out and the basket's out give it a clean off put it back jobs are good okay as you can see what i've done i've uh, got a hole store and cut a hole same diameter as that, so that I don't catch underneath, I'll foot straight through. But as you can see, it's not quite flush. That's so all the weight on it, a bit difficult one handed, but all the weight of that is going to be on this section of the thing here. So I don't want all that weight on there. So what I'm going to do, I got my, let's see, yes, I haven't finished the slabbing. <laughs> Uh, like I said, I've got my router with an angle on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to route this all the way out, all the way around to to chamfered in. So when that sits in on there, on this piece, it's going to be sitting. Where are we? More, more here. So it's got a bit more space support up the whole of that. So when I put that in there, I cut this to size, which is I think it's just about a foot. So I'll cut that to size, strip off it, and I can decide which way around I want it. And if I need to take some off the back to get it close to the wall or further away, I'll do this side and take it off the back here. But once it's slotted into place, I was going to cut it down into the size and measure it all up, mark it, but it would make it awkward to do the routing out on it. So I'll do it like this, and I'll just cut down the size I need after, slot it in, and jobs are good. So I'm going to route this out now, it's going to be difficult to film, so I'll show you afterwards. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, you can see that that's been uh, routed out. You can see the difference comparison. If I can do it one handed, if I do it the side, excuse my footage, get that in there one second. Okay, so if I can get that in there and show you why it's sitting on there, the depth of that, so that's the unrouted piece. So if I can swap that the other side. Again, awkward one-handed. To so there, it's just sitting in a bit deeper, a bit flusher, so it's taking all the pressure 
In fact, you can actually see, you can see the marks on there now for this out. You can actually see where it's sitting here now. Rather than it sitting around the edge, it's actually sitting there. So it's actually putting, instead of putting all the pressure on that piece, it's evened it out up to there. So that's in there. Jobs are good, and it's giving me plenty down there to get my things in underneath what I need to do. So what I'm going to do now is cut this piece of wood down to size, stick it in, bolt it down, and I can uh, see how we're getting on. Jobs are good. Okay, here we are. The uh, platform's in, bolted down. This is only, well, this is a, this filter's only in temporary, just so I can make sure it fitted right. So that's my hole cut and put in there. And as you can see, I've put a strap around it on here to secure it to the wall. And I've still got one of my rubbers on the top. It's going to be about here and my other pipe working for the return down. It's going to come up over and down that way. And actually, there's plenty of room here. So if I need to get to my um, UV filter, I need to set that off. It's not going to interfere. Um, and hopefully at some point I'm going to replace this with solid pipes so that gives me plenty of room down there to do what I need to do. And as you can see down here, it's going to be down here. I'm going to have a slide valve and everything else to the waste. And the pipe work's going to run that way out to there. And uh, with this bracket or brace I put on, um, it is a 150mm pipe or tube I bought. And I bought a 150mm bracket to hold it in place. Um, but when it come, it's actually 153 mil. So there's a bit of prey in there. So what I've done, you can see these little black things I've actually put. They're actually uh, little felt stickers, like furniture stickers. I've put them in there, and that really secured it well. And it gives it a bit of a, a damper for when the air's on or any any movement in there. It's not completely, so as you can see, there's a bit of give in it. So it's not completely solid on there, any vibration or anything. Uh, it's not going to damage the acrylic. And it's easy enough to get off, just unclip that. And if I need to get the pipe off, and any work to be done. So that's where I am at the moment with that. Uh, as I said, I can't complete it yet. Uh, I have got more work to do, uh, more parts to come. But that, once all that's done, that's gonna be a completely different build. So that's gonna be a new build on its own. So all that's done in here, all I can do for now. Uh, so, fantastic, jobs are good. Okay, I was hoping today to um, figure out my pipe work. I'm doing everything over. That's going into my pump house over here. What I need to go over there and work out my bypass. But unfortunately, uh, I've had a phone call. I've got to go out. So I'm not going to have time to do what I want to get done today. Um, so hopefully, uh, when I come home from work tomorrow, I'll see if you don't. Hammering down with rain again. Um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, Yes, obviously got a lot of digging over there to do. I've got to sort all that digging out. But I want to get the pipe work sorted out in my head, just in case I need to order any other parts. But until I have a look at that and how it's going to go, I don't know. So that's where I am for now. So there we go to manor. Hopefully it's going to be dry when I get home and I can get that sorted out. And I'll see you in a bit. Hi guys. Um, just coming from work. So, <coughs> excuse me. What I want to do now is I want to get the cover off my pump house and see if we can figure out if it's going to work. So I'll spin you around and uh, we'll get this cover off. Back in a minute. Okay, <clears throat> cover's off. Right, my plans here, I've been looking at. What I want to do is my pipe work from my uh, skimmer for my upflow filter is going to run through here. Somewhere, let's see the pipe work's probably going to go underneath, underneath here, through into the shed. Um, but what I want to do is put a bypass in, so I needed room for two ball valves and a slide valve. So, but I think in here, I think it's going to be a bit awkward to get my pipe work to go straight back into over here, where am I? Over here, virtually next to each other. It's not really going to work. I haven't got the space. So, um, what I've come up with, oh, let me get back up. I'll show you over, let me set it back up and uh, I'll show you what it is back in a second. Okay, obviously this isn't the final place obviously so um, there's my, one's my return, uh, 
my feed, uh, feed and return roughly where I need them to be. So what I've decided in doing, if you can see here, this is obviously isn't in place at the moment, it's just a lid off another one to see if I can get it to fit. So I can move these up a minute. My idea is, if you look down, you can see just down in there, somewhere down, down here is my pump feed, which goes from the moment it goes from there. If I slide this over a bit, you might see it better. That's my pump. Also at the moment, it's just going straight up here to this pipe, which goes to my two returns over there. So my idea is, dig all this out, obviously got the pipe which to dig out here. I want to brick it up to put this a manhole cover here. And that'll be right up against the skimmer once it's in place. So my idea is the feed will come from here into here through the ball valve to this pipe straight to my upflow filter then the return will come back here through here and then into my pipe there which feeds my two returns over over there so my idea being if i've got uh, chemical or anything else that i don't want the upflow filter to remove because it can get it down quite fine all I can do, obviously these are, I'll be up that way, is I can turn these two ball valves off, open up this slide valve, and the feed will come straight from the pump, through my hair, my bypass, and straight back into the pond. So the skimmer then, the only filtration it's gonna have is that Japanese matting, which is gonna filter out into the big stuff. So that's my idea at the moment. Obviously, Yes, it's not pressure pipe, um, but I don't, honestly, it's not going to go that deep. It's only going to go four or five inches underground here. And uh, I think that's going to be more than strong enough, to be honest. And it is quite flexible, so if it is a bit out, I can bend it a little bit, heat it up and melt it. And I've got various different angles as well. So that's my idea. It's going to come in, through, upflow filter, return down the outer pipe and back to the pond. So that's my idea I've come up with at the moment. Uh, a bit more work involved, but I'm more than happy with that. Trying to do this setup the way I wanted this done, uh, actually in there, would have been a bit awkward. Then I've got to take all this apart when I need to get to it, and I need access to get down, down there, which under here, down there is my uh, main ball valve to, sh to shut the pond off. I didn't want to obstruct anything down there, so I was, the only way I could have done it was have it here at the front, really. Uh, somewhere at the front or at the side here, even, to get through. But then it had been a bit tight inside the, the shed when I get down. That section there to get through into the shed would have been a bit awkward into the filter house. So that's what I've come up with with the manhole cover. But the only problem, and one problem I do have here, look. But this snails everywhere so I might have to uh, use the idea from Martin at Kyle Water Plants and Rents and put some copper strips in here to stop it going in also I do get as you can see here look I do get them in as well so I might have to put some strip around there just in case they want to do want to get in there, it just stops them climbing up there. So again, I'm gonna to have to use some of that copper stripping. So that's my idea. Hopefully it'll work until I start digging and putting it in and might have to alter it slightly, but that, that's my idea. Um, a good reason for this as well being here. Um, yeah, I could have, I was, originally I thought about having it here in the middle, so Maybe easier access, but I have got a possible, there's something I want to do here. I'm still going to need access down here, obviously down the side. Whether I do or not, that I have got a plan that might work, might not, it may come off, we'll have to wait and see, but I've got something, an idea I might do here. Um, but we'll have to wait and see if we get that one. Okay, so that's my idea for my uh, pipe work outside and my bypass.
see how that goes. Uh, just want to quickly mention as well, um, don't forget on the 14th and 15th of August, there's the British Kai Keepers Society uh, show in Coventry on the 14th and 15th of August. Now I am going to go to one of these shows, one of these days, uh, not 100% sure which yet, it all depends. Um, I'm, maybe the Saturday, it depends. Sunday might be a bit more difficult, but I'm not 100% yet on that one. So as I said before, if you do go and you are going and you do see me, yeah, you know I'll be there. I'll be the one with the atom. <laughs> Pop over and say hello. It'd be fantastic to meet you all and say hello. Um, on the subject of Koi shows, um, I've seen a, a lot of my fellow YouTubers. I went to the Adam Boyer and uh, Andrew Daly Groven show. Uh, I Unfortunately, I couldn't make it myself. I had other prior commitments, unfortunately. So, But I have seen uh, a lot of the videos that have come out there from a lot of you um, and I've got to say it looked absolutely fantastic really did um, uh, really sorry I couldn't go I really wish I could have done and uh, be nice to meet up but as I said we've got the show this in August 14 to 15 so hopefully I'll see you there but I do want to say a big thank you to Adam Boyer and Andrew Daly it did look like a fantastic event uh, so a big thank you to those for putting that on um, and for everybody who did have one of the uh, growing show fish good luck I'm rooting for you and I'll be uh, watching with interest on your videos and uh, keep an eye on those. So hopefully we'll have a nice winner in there somewhere. Um, we'll see how we go with that one. Uh, also, if, if you've seen it, but on uh, Wednesday, just gone, I'll put another little video out. A bit of a fun competition on this one. Um, it just uh, to say, he's coming up to my, well, not to come up to, it's just gone. Uh, last Friday was my first year birthday on Friday. And it was just a bit of a thank you, you know, a bit of a giveaway, a bit of fun. To say thank you for everybody that's helped me along the way and uh, all the subscribers. So if you haven't had a goal ready, pop back on the Travel Up at the Wednesday video and it'll give you all the information on there. Uh, if you have, have had a goal already, have another go. Uh, there's no limit on the amount of times you can have a go at this competition. Uh, like I say, it's just going to be a bit of fun this one, nothing too serious. Um, I'm going to pick the two best, if you're unsure what I mean, just pop back and have a look at the Wednesday one. It'll give you all the information on there. I'm going to pick the two best, which will be next Wednesday. I'll do that one out there and we can get a couple of winners. Okay, also on Wednesday I did a, a shout out and to say some thank yous to a, a few people. Uh, but I did forget somebody uh, very important and my life's going to be a hell. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Um, I need to say a big, big thank you. This channel wouldn't be what it is today and where it is today uh, if it wasn't for my partner, Graham. I'll put a picture up here. My partner of 31 years, this is Graham. He's been a big help in this channel and building this channel for me and uh, he makes me look good because he does all the editing for me. <laughs> I do all this stuff and out to work and everything else and he, he does all the editing. So I want to say a big thank you to, to Graham for that. Thank you. Um, also, I'm getting very close to my 2,000 subscribers. I'm getting very, very close now. So if you haven't subscribed, really hit that subscribe button. See if we can get them 2,000. It'd be absolutely fantastic. Give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate appreciate it. Don't forget, I've got a, a Facebook. Pop over there to say hello as well. So until the next one, stay safe. Hope to see you on the 14th or 15th. Jobs are good.